Alors, shall we watch the third episode of Lupin together and see what French we can break down? Well, yeah, I mean, you clicked on this video, so that's exactly what you want to watch. So I'm not going to make you wait. Si vous êtes prêts, allez, c'est parti pour le troisième épisode. Tu te laisses aller du monde. Alors, 33 seconds in and we have our first thing to talk about. And this is something that's tricky in grammar for us English speakers to understand sometimes. And that is the use of these pronominal verbs. Pronominal verbs being those which require that s in front of the infinitive or the, the main body of the verb, right? Because a lot of time these are needed to express simple actions like je me douche ou je me lève. Right here, you can't just say je lève ou je douche. You have to specify that you're actually washing or that it's you that you're getting up. So you say je me lève, I get myself up or je me douche, I shower myself. In English, that's a given. It's known. So you just say I, I shower, right? Or I get up. So that's one type of pronominal verb and those are the trickiest for us to understand. But this is a nice example with se laisser aller se laisser aller because actually the pronominal form of laisser is more easily translatable to English because you say let yourself go, let yourself go. So you have to in English say yourself or let oneself or I let myself go. You can't just say I let go, that means something else. So this is a case where a reflexive or pronominal verb in French makes more sense in English. And I like this expression as a whole, se laisser aller, because we have the equivalent in English, to let oneself go, to stop taking care of yourself. Tu te laisses aller du monde. Ah, vous avez un bureau ici à la mairie Ouais, peut-être. Enfin, j'ai dû y foutre les pieds deux fois. Pourquoi Parce que dans ce bureau, il y a un ordinateur que j'ai mis à jour. Et j'ai trouvé des trucs. Quoi Des trucs un peu chauds. Du pardon Now, you may well know that using the word show ou should <laughs> in French as a French learner can get you into hot water because if you say to someone, for example, je suis chaud, it actually means if you're not careful with the context, it means that you're sexually aroused, right? But as you can see on screen right now, there's a lot of different meanings of the word show. So as you get past that sort of embarrassing stage, you realize, oh, you can actually safely use show with être and I'm pointing this particular use out because um, he's using it as, as an adjective so he's saying he found uh, some hot things and uh, he basically means some spicy things some sexy material that he probably wouldn't want anyone to uh, to see right and then he follows it up with by specifying uh, du porno like some porn so as a French learner, you want to remember to, if you want to say I'm hot, like temperature wise, you need to use avoir, j'ai chaud, j'ai chaud. And it doesn't change whether you're masculine or feminine because you're using avoir. So if you're a woman, you say j'ai chaud, man, you say j'ai chaud. And don't use être, you don't literally translate I am hot, you say I have hot, if you're talking about that. Um, but as you can see from that list, which I'll put up again, is that show has a lot of different uses. For example, you can talk about it to be up for going out somewhere. You can be up for uh, doing something that you've been invited to. You're up for it. It makes it makes it it sounds fun to you. It sounds like a good idea. You say, "Ah, oh, oui, oui, je suis show." And because of the context, it's not embarrassing. It's nice informal language. Uh, and really natural French. And another favorite way of mine to use it is to talk about being warmed up. So maybe you're playing uh, football or tennis and you have a little warm up before you start the match, you start to get serious. And you can say, Allez, vous êtes chaud? Which means, are you warmed up? Can we play? And uh, that's, a, that's a nice use of chaud as well. But have a look at the word reference page. I'll put it down in the description below. Check out all the different meanings of chaud. Vous êtes qui? Encore une mauvaise question. Je vais te demander de te concentrer du monde. On va revenir en arrière. Souviens-toi de lui. Uh, this thing I want to bring up is because something I've 
I'm currently, and I say currently, I mean like over the last months, I'm trying to remember how to talk about going backwards, specifically going back in time, like he's talking about here, but it also means go physically backwards. And he says, revenir en arrière. Revenir en arrière. Revenir en arrière. And it's difficult for me to remember because I think of uh, en arrière. I always think if you're going back to the past, I always want to say to equals à in French. So it would be revenir à l'arrière. But um, if you're talking specifically, I think, about the, the past in time, you say en arrière, revenir en arrière. Contrast that with, say, you want to go forward in time, you say aller de l'avant. Aller de l'avant. And this confuses my, my poor English brain because it's de l'avant. And you think de means from and it's, des and it's an association you desperately need to get out of your head. Stop thinking de is always from because it just isn't. And it makes it harder to get yourself rid of that habit uh, later on. So you can say aller de l'avant for going, for going forward, whether it be in time or in physical space. And then if you actually say aller à l'avant, you're talking about the physical space up front. So go to the front, go to the front. And I believe that is a good explanation. If there are any Frenchies watching who want to pick apart my definitions, please feel free in the comments. You'll help me and you'll help a lot of other people out as well. But that's where I'm at with that. And I like that. Revenir en arrière, to go back in time. And the other part of this, which I like is se souvenir de. Souviens-toi de lui. Se souvenir de, because a lot of us learners often forget or we just don't know that when you're saying remember something or remember someone in French, you need the preposition de in between. So you say, je me souviens de toi, je me souviens de toi. It's not je me souviens toi ou je me te souviens, it's je me souviens de toi. So there's a preposition in the French form of the verb that doesn't exist in English and that's often why we don't think of putting it or we find it hard to start adding it because it simply doesn't exist in English. But it's a good one to remember, especially English speakers, because it's a mistake we tend to make. C'est de découvrir la vérité, c'est pas pareil. On se voit bientôt. Dès que j'en sais un peu plus. Now, if you've ever wondered how to say as soon as or as soon as possible in French, look no further than the expression de que. De que with that familiar word of de, but it's actually got the accent grave on the e, which turns it into a different word. Pronounced still the same as far as my ears can tell me. Dès que j'en sais un peu plus. So use it as de que possible for as soon as possible. De que possible. Or you say de que j'en sais possible un peu plus, like he says in the video. Dès que j'en sais un peu plus. So dès que, really handy for as soon as, plus whatever you want to say afterwards. So that's really cool. Uh, and then the second part is he says, j'en sais un peu plus. And this is j'en sais because it's je sais de quelque chose. So je sais de quelque chose means I know about something or I know of something. So he's saying, dès que j'en sais un peu, un peu plus. Because what he knows about, what he will know about is known in the context. So when I know more about that, essentially, dès que j'en sais un peu plus. So that's quite cool. And you often hear this in the sort of more fixed expression where people say, j'en sais rien. J'en sais rien. Like, I have no idea. I know nothing about that. J'en sais rien. J'ai piégé personne. Tu l'as pas beaucoup cherché, ce collier. Parce que tu avais qu'un vague suspect. Maybe it's his delivery here or maybe it's just the pronunciation of this word, but I felt like I needed to finally look up the, the meaning of bidon. Bidon. Um, but I do like the pronunciation. It means, it means phony or fake or false. And uh, he uses it twice here in two sentences. But it reminds me of how important it is to get that difference between on and en. On and en. Now, if you speak slowly and clearly, it's quite easy to make yourself say on, but you have to do something your English mouth muscles and throat muscles aren't really used to doing. We have to really make that on sound. We don't have that sound. So when we're speaking swiftly, I think one of the 
one of the many signs that French speakers ears use to know that we are not uh, French is that we would say en, more like en. Like you get used to saying en instead of nous, which is really great. But I noticed that when I speak quickly, I just I just say en, 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 and it's that's closer or identical to en, en, the pronoun, right? And because of the context, no one corrects you. They know exactly what you're saying. But the word bidon, I think, makes it easier to force yourself to form that sound. I would never say bidon, bidon. I'd say bidon. It just seems easier. So this reminded me of the importance of checking my pronunciation with those with that o n sound. On, on, on. Sounds like a bit of a seal. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you watch the video where I talk about the French used in the first episode of Lupin, then you might remember that I talked about that how there were four terms used to talk about money, and they were l'argent, l'oseille, le pognon, et la thune. Now, here we have a fifth one, and he says, il a, il a pas un rond, il a pas un rond. And I looked this up, and as you'll see on screen now, word reference has it indeed as a as a as a rond as a use for penny cent or something of very low denomination like that but it's noted as both slang and vieilli so it's slang and old french so i like that but that's a fifth way of talking about money i think it's basically the equivalent of like he doesn't he didn't have a penny to his name or he didn't have a dime to his name change des vieux papiers arrête de te foutre de ma gueule je sais très bien que tu ranges pas des vieux papiers là <laughs> now she uses an expression here which is something that I am hearing a lot because my girlfriend tends to say it and that is se foutre de la gueule de quelqu'un it's quite a mouthful when you hear it like that but typically it's not that that long a phrase and it means to mess someone about or to take the piss and it's like the more vulgar more informal version of se moquer de quelqu'un se moquer de quelqu'un which means to mock someone Right, so be careful if you want to use this because it is, you know, use it for people you really know you can speak informally with or have a joke with. But um, she says, Arrête de te foutre de ma gueule. Stop messing me around. Right, and I really like that and I try to use it because uh, I hear it more and more and it feels good when I can use that myself. Tu pas obligé de me mentir, tu sais. Je sais pas ce que tu es en train de faire là. Je ne je... sais pas si j'ai envie de savoir. J'ai envie de savoir. No, I don't want to know. It's at this point? At this point, yeah. Something the French love to do to emphasize something is to add on either si or la to the ends of something. And it can be really handy when, you're, when you've got a choice of something, two of something in front of you. One is celui-la and one is celui-ci, if it's masculine, right? But it can be confusing to know when to use either of those and when to maybe leave it behind. Here, she says, à ce point. À ce point. À ce point. And then he confirms, but instead of just saying oui, à ce point, he says, à ce point-là. À ce point-là. So he gets further... He goes further with it and it's really specifying that yes, it is indeed that thing and you add la onto the end of it. La is the more common one when you don't have a choice of two rather than si, but you can also add on si and I'm definitely not uh, at the level where I know exactly the reasons why you choose between them. But this is very oral, very informal uh, spoken French. So lots of rules get broken anyway. So you just gotta, gotta go with, keep your ears open, over time, over time, you learn what people say when and you start to imitate them. Ça se point? Ça se point là. Ton truc en fait. Écoute, je peux pas aller plus vite que la machine en fait, c'est du 128 bits. Vas-y, on s'en fout, on n'a pas le temps. Les gars, on a chopé la camionnette à porte de Pantin, on fonce. Non, non, on va attendre. On va attendre de voir si le téléphone de Dumouriez. This is an example of where I think French can be seen as easier. Bon, il y a la plaque, il y a bien ce vieux l'homme <laughs> easier <laughs> to learn in terms of grammar because here we'd say something like um uh should we go like should we hurry should we go for it something like that uh, so we have to use should we and we use that modal verb we use that sort of conditional 
uh, voice, if you like, should we go and use two verbs there, should and go. But in French, you just simply use the present and you say, on fonce. On fonce or on y va. You just sort of suggest it with the tone. You make a question out of it. Instead of having shall and the verb, they just have the present tense. Structured the same as in a normal phrase, but with the upper inflection at the end to suggest it's a question. So, on fonce. Quelqu'un qui s'est laissé tenter, c'est tout. Now, I bring this up because right at the beginning of the video, we talked about se laisser aller, se laisser aller, to let oneself go. And here's another use of se laisser, but instead of aller afterwards, use tenter. He let himself, he allowed himself to be tempted. Se laisser tenter. Se laisser tenter. And you'll notice that you don't have être in there for the to be tempted and it doesn't become être tenté with tenté in the past tense it's just se laisser tenter se laisser tenter c'est comment ton bouquin trop bien c'est un show lui pas non c'est à dire et il assure le mec il se tape plein de meufs on peut dire ça comme ça hein. il enchaîne bien so here earlier on in the video we talked about show and it was typically being used, used as adjectives and we know we could sort of need to be careful with it sometimes. Uh, here she's using it as what looks like a noun. She says, c'est un show, Lupin. Non? And it's like, but what's a hot? No, so it's actually an homme show or un mec show or un gars show. That would be the noun, the gars or the homme or mec, right? But because they both know who she's talking about, she just cuts it and just says un show. C'est un show. C'est un show, Lupin, non? And in this case, it kind of means like he's a he's a seducer. He's quite a, he's he was a, he was kind of getting a, a lot of action with the ladies, as she clarifies in the next uh, in the next sentence. But uh, I found this interesting. C'est un show. Second use of se foutre de la gueule de quelqu'un, that big expression which means to take the piss or to mess someone about, which is better in this situation. She says, il se fout de notre, notre gueule, notre gueule, or as it, she speaks so quickly, she says, notre gueule, il se fout de notre gueule, right? It's like he's messing us around, he's messing us around. Putain, il se fout de notre gueule. Now, another use in French of when he simply just says on plus the present tense conjugation of a verb and where in English we'd say, let's go, let's go forward, let's advance, let's advance, right? They don't use the imperative here. They don't say avançons, avançons. They just say on avance, on avance. And I think it's just because it's less formal. Babacar va signer des aveux et vous allez boucler une belle affaire. Il signera jamais. Si. Parce que vous venez d'avoir une brillante idée. Vous allez proposer à ma femme de le lui demander. Now, why is it le lui demander here? Le lui demander. Well, I'm not going to go too deeply into it because I've done plenty of videos on talking about le or lui and talking about the order of the pronouns. But basically, he's talking about asking someone to do something and that becomes le. And then he's talking about the person he's going to ask to do that something, which becomes lui. And the order of the pronouns requires that it's been Le lui demander. Vous allez proposer à ma femme de le lui demander. So go ahead and after this video and check out my explanations all about pronoun order or choosing between lui and le. I'll put a link to that on the end screen at the end of the video. Voilà, voilà. Ça, c'est tous mes commentaires sur le troisième épisode de Lupin. Si tu veux revenir en arrière pour utiliser un terme qu'on a décortiqué au début de la vidéo. On va revenir en arrière. Tu peux trouver les autres épisodes dans la description en dessous.
Do let me know what your favorite word, phrase, or bit of grammar that we talked about uh, today was down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Merci beaucoup to all my supporters here on the YouTube channel and over on Kofi.com, les francophiles. There are a few of you that are new, so bienvenue. Without you, this video may not have been possible. So merci beaucoup. So merci beaucoup à tous et à toutes de m'avoir rejoint aujourd'hui. And I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine. Ciao. Can we just take a moment to have a little debate in the comments about socks with sandals? What do we think about them? For me, I just think my, my feet get hot and if I want to wear sandals, it's to let my feet breathe and I'm, I'm quite warm. But what do you guys think? <laughs> let me know down in the comments. I'm dying to know. And also, my feet don't stay in those things. I feel like I have to make more effort to dig into the front of them to keep them on. It's just not very comfortable wear. <laughs>